Greetings, everybody. Uh, we're going to do our final installment for Unit 3 and discuss topics 3.6 and 3.9. Um, with the enduring understanding that human populations change in reaction to a variety of factors, including uh, many of those factors we talked about in reference to uh, populations within our more natural ecosystems, but we also have social and cultural factors to consider for human population especially. Um, read sections 8.3 and 8.4, pages 214 through 223, that is the rest of chapter 8. Uh, do, absolutely do follow up with your Miller textbook and get that reading done to accompany these notes. All right, um, so topic 3.6 is age structure diagrams. Now what an age structure diagram does is it gives us a graphical representation of the uh, relative proportions of people in a society or country or region and um, relative breakdown of males to females. Now this is important in understanding population dynamics, particularly as it pertains to uh, recognizing how quickly a country or region is going to grow based on the age breakdown of the people uh, living there at this time. So in the case of this particular age structure diagram, we're looking at the shape that would uh, result in pretty rapid expansion of that population. Now the way that you probably want to look at this is you want to be comparing this age group, which is our pre-reproductive age, to the current reproductive age. All right, so right there, that indicates relatively high fertility rates in that the number of individuals in that pre-reproductive age is significantly higher than the number in the current reproductive age. What that also means is in the relatively near future, right, we are going to have a high number of individuals in that reproductive age group. Um, and if fertility rates do remain high, we're going to see a rapid expansion of that population. Okay, so the key characteristics of that rapidly expanding population curve is um, wide at the bottom, indicating that in the near future, we're going to have a large number of individuals in that reproductive age group. Right? Now we can compare that to a slower expansion. And so what we see here as a key difference is uh, that um, we still have expansion because we do still see fertility rates a little bit higher uh, than replacement level because we're seeing a large, that, that proportion or the number of people in that pre-reproductive age higher than uh, the reproductive age, which means in the near future that population is going to grow. Okay, uh, but just more slowly. It's not as stark or drastic of a difference. Now, uh, an age structure diagram of a stable population would look something very similar to this, in which there is uh, little, if any, difference, right, in the proportion of people in the reproductive age compared to the pre-reproductive age, which means we're basically in the future going to have essentially the same number of people in that reproductive age, which probably tells us that our fertility rates are right about replacement level. Okay, and uh, last, but also uh, an important distinction is, what does a declining population look like? Um, in this case, again, we're looking at our reproductive age currently here, and notice that, that in the future, we will have fewer people of reproductive age, which means that our fertility rates are less than that replacement level. Now, another really important uh, point that I want to point, want you guys to recognize, and we will talk about this probably in class, because uh, this is more of a classroom topic, uh, is let's pay close attention to that post-reproductive age, ages 45 to 85 or more, right? Look at the relative proportion of people in that higher age group uh, as we work through these different uh, age structure diagrams, right? Uh, this has some really important implications um, 
for society. Uh, when we tend to have these declining populations, we tend to have a larger proportion of people in that post-reproductive age. Um, but also, we have to consider is, uh, I mean, 45 is pretty young for retirement, but we're going to have a larger proportion of people in the retirement age, which means there are people that are uh, basically uh, using goods and services but are no longer uh, part of the production of those goods and services. Um, and it creates a little bit of an imbalance in consumption and production. Um, so there's some economic concerns, some health care concerns, and so on. And also notice the imbalance between females and males, particularly in that upper age group. Females do traditionally, especially near uh, the top end there, uh, live a little longer than males. So it's just another uh, interesting point there. All right, so what you guys want to be able to do, right, is look, be given an age structure diagram, right, and recognize whether the population is expanding rapidly, expanding slowly, relatively stable, or declining, right? And really the, the portions to look at are those bottom two. Compare the pre-reproductive age to the reproductive age, right? Uh, and that's a pretty good indicator of fertility rates and therefore how fast a society will be growing in the future. All right, um, the last topic, which is topic 3.9, is what's called the demographic transition. And we've talked about this uh, a little bit less formally, but we have talked about this already um, in our class discussion. But a demographic transition essentially refers to uh, the, what changes in a society um, as it industrializes or becomes more developed over time. All right, so stage one um, is what we refer to in this class as the pre-industrial stage. So um, in stage one, we tend to have high birth rates, but a correspondingly high death rate, okay? And so our population growth during that pre-industrial stage will be pretty modest, slow growth, okay? Now, as a, con a country uh, improves its living conditions, Right? So we're going to have better access to health care, for example, um, better infrastructure, uh, better distribution of food. So people are living more, essentially, living better lives. So the first thing to change right, in that second strain, the transitional stage, is a decreasing death rate. All right. So the death rate tends to decrease first, while the birth rate tends to remain high. Okay, so we have a lower death rate, we remain with a high birth rate, and that's when we get that rapid population growth. So if we go back to our uh, expanding rapidly, this would be what a transitional country would look like, right? Uh, high fertility rates, but lots of those people surviving into adulthood uh, because of better conditions in healthcare. So we're going to have a rapidly increasing population. All right. Um, now, what does begin to happen as the, the, the country transitions to that um, industrialized state is um, uh, education levels, access to health care, access to contraception, right? Um, and particularly for our female populations, tends to increase over time. And as a result, late in that transitional stage and into the industrial stage, we see uh, the birth rate begin to decline over time. Okay, and so during that industrial stage, right, uh, we see a declining birth rate, right, and therefore, uh, and totally logically, the population growth rate slows. So we start to run into that decreasing growth rate over time. Okay, and then finally, we enter what's called the post-industrial stage. So uh, the society is done transitioning, all right? Um, and so we, we end typically in a place with uh, low birth rates and low death rates. So we end up with an aging population because of the, the low death rates, right? Um, and relatively low fertility rates that are at or below replacement level. And so what we generally tend to see um, in that post-industrial stage is a leveling off of the population, or in some cases, even a decline, particularly if the, the fertility rates drop 
uh, below that replacement level, as they often do. Um, and we're seeing this in countries already. Again, examples would be uh, Japan and much of uh, Europe. Right? Fertility rates are below replacement level. And in the absence of uh, immigration, right, those population sizes will decline over time in those countries. All right. And that is the demographic stages. You guys want to be able to recognize how birth and death rates change, right, uh, in each of those stages, and then what we would expect in terms of uh, the, the rate of change in that population over time. When would we expect a rapid expansion, right? When would we expect uh, slow growth? When would we expect uh, either a stable or declining population? What stage? And what are the implications for that in terms of birth and death rates? All right, that is it.